Hi everyone, it's Katie with The Doll. Before we get started on this next lesson, I just wanted to remind you that we are still working diligently on our summer program for camps, classes, and workshops. So right now we're working on making all of that information available on our website. And although registration is closed currently, you can still go check everything out. Also, I want to remind you that we do have scholarships available for your young artist. And all of that information is also available on the website, so definitely go check that out as well. And always feel free to call us and ask us any questions you have. So for this lesson, it was probably my favorite thing that I learned in fifth grade. Um, it provided me countless hours of enjoyment and exploration and challenge. So I'm hoping that this will also be true for all of you who are staying safe at home. And additionally, it's a really great symbol that we could all use in these uncertain times. So let's get started. According to the Japanese Canadian Culture Center, in Japan, the crane is a mystical creature and is believed to live for a thousand years. As a result, in the Japanese, Chinese, and Korean culture, the crane represents good fortune and longevity. The Japanese refer to the crane as the bird of happiness. Traditionally, it was believed that if one folded 1,000 origami cranes, one's wish would come true. It has also been a symbol of hope and healing during challenging times. As a result, it has become popular to fold 1,000 cranes. The cranes are strung together on a string, usually 25 strings of 40 cranes each, given as gifts. I hope you caught these two words as I was reading, hope and healing. I knew the crane was a positive symbol, but I couldn't remember its specific meaning. As I researched for this lesson, I knew I was on the right track when I read these two words. I've included links to a short video and two articles that talk about the story of Sadako Sazaki the young girl who repopularized folding 1,000 paper cranes and who really made the meaning of the paper crane what it is. Before you fold your first crane, I highly recommend that you watch the video and check out the articles so you can better understand the meaning behind the paper crane. So pause this video and click the first link. As you fold your crane, I highly encourage you to think of all those who need healing and to both have hope and send hope to others. The supplies you'll need for this project is a piece of paper and a scissors. Um, it's also optional that you can decorate um, your piece of paper on one side. Um, so the materials that you would use for that could range from markers, crayons, colored pencils, anything that won't smudge. The first thing that you'll need to do is make a square piece of paper. So if you have a regular sized piece of computer paper, um, you'll just need to fold it over as you can see in the video and then cut off the extra that's at the bottom. Here you can see I'm just doing a quick and easy um, polka dot design on one side for my paper crane. Now for the actual folding of the paper crane, the first thing that you're going to do is um, take your piece of paper and fold it in half with your design side up. Then you're going to go ahead and fold it in half again. So you end up with a square. Then you're going to unfold. And now you're going to um, use that center crease to fold tri a triangle on each side. And you can see I have the open part on the bottom. And then you're going to flip over and you're going to do the same thing. So you end up with this triangle. Then you're going to open that up in the center and it will fold into a square. And you can see that there is a crease going down the middle, so you have two triangles on each side. I refer to this next step as the kite step because that's what it's going to end up looking like. Um, so you're basically going to take half of each side and fold it along the center crease. And you're going to do that on both sides. Okay. 
Now this next step is a little bit trickier. So I typically fold um, the top triangle down just to give it a crease and that seems to help. This next step is what I call the boat step. So you're going to carefully unfold the bottom half and then you're going to fold that in like so. So it should be a symmetrical top and bottom. We'll have these two um, long triangles with an opening down the middle and you'll do this again on both sides. once that step is complete, you're going to basically unfold um, that in on itself. And here we're almost to the end. So now you kind of can see um, the shape of the paper crane. You're going to fold each wing up. Then you're going to crease at the bottom. Do this again on the other side. And then this next step is a little bit tricky. You're going to pull um, the head and the tail just a little bit forward, like so, and then you're going to crease that bottom again. So it's going to make an angle at the bottom. We'll do that both for the neck and for the tail of the crane. Pull it out a little bit and then fold and make a crease again. And then um, folding the wings down. on both sides, of course. And then the last step is the head. You're just going to fold that down. You have to give it a little bit of a crease for it to stay. And there you have your paper crane. Here are my suggestions for modifying this lesson um, once you have the folding of your paper crane down, which I just want to add it takes a lot of practice, so don't be hard on yourself if your first crane doesn't turn out exactly the way that you are hoping. You just have to keep trying. So what you could do is explore with different types of paper, newspaper, magazine, scrapbooking paper, or decorate it with colored pencils, markers, crayons, pens, watercolor, or any other supplies you have that doesn't smudge. I really hope that you were able to find some enjoyment and potentially some hope and healing through this lesson. I can't wait to see all the different paper cranes that you guys make. Please send us images of those. I will include my email at the end of this video and I will also include my email in the description of this video. So please send us your images. If you don't feel comfortable having those posted online, just let us know and we won't have to, but I would still love to see the work that you guys are doing at home with these lessons. So. Thanks so much for watching.